Gonna do a little bit, something a little bit different today. Uh, oh, there goes my little dog, my little chihuahua. Uh, I got this Lasco here, and uh, we use these in, here in Texas, and probably you people use these all over the country to help supplement the heat in a room to keep down uh, energy costs. Uh, I typically like to clean these out every once in a while because they get full of lint and of course we have a couple dogs, big and small, and a cat. So uh, I started taking this one apart. Um, one thing you're going to find when you do this is that the screws that hold the case together have a very funky kind of head on them. I don't know if you can see that, but it's almost like a Torex head. With a, with a pin in the center. Uh, so what I used was just a little cheapy giveaway screwdriver <laughs> with a little magnetic end. Let's see, this one comes from System Service Limited and it's probably as old as I am and uh, I'm sure they're not even in business anymore. But these, these uh, small blades can actually get inside and around that pin that's in the center of the screw and make it a little bit easier for you to get it out. Now I tried using a standard Phillips type and the tip of the Phillips hits right in on that pin in the center of the screw. So you're not gonna get it out with one of those. Uh, I also tried using this particular Craftsman which I'm sure a lot of you guys have out there. Um, and that wouldn't uh, get in there either. Um, actually, I ended up taking down the tip a little bit because I have a couple of these and of course Sears has a lifetime warranty so I'll just take it back in and get a new one. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I took down the tip a little bit on this and that actually did work. So what you've, what you've got to deal with with that type of screw is essentially uh, four on the sides and then four in the back here. Uh, let me do that again. Four on the sides and four in the back here. So once you get those out, you can get this back off and take a look at what's going on inside here. Now the other thing I already have done is I've gone ahead and removed the blower housing. Um, essentially there's some screws on the side here. Those are standard Phillip screws. And there's also a couple of screws on the other side, and those were standard Phillips. But once I got inside here, you can see the inside of this bl rotating blower is just loaded with lint and fuzz. And here on the actual heating element, you can see the heating element is full of fuzz, and some of it is charred. So it's a situation that you probably want to remedy on a yearly basis, if not more, if you're running these heaters pretty consistently. And as you can see inside the case, there's hair, fuzz, lint all over this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and take apart this blower housing. Um, looks to me like we got a couple screws up on the top here, a couple screws down on the bottom so that I can get at this rotating fan here and uh, get that thing cleaned out. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and use a vacuum cleaner and vacuum this whole inside out. Uh, now another option would be an air compressor, but then you're gonna have fuzz flying all over. If you take it outside and do it, you might be okay. So let me uh, set the camera down for a minute. And once I get that blower housing off, We'll fire on back up and I'll let you take a look at what that looks like on the inside. So hang tight. So I went ahead, I got that side of the blower housing off here. Uh, that just entailed four screws came off pretty easily, pretty quickly. Uh, but as you can see, this uh, little spinning rotating blower inside of here is just full of air and lint and uh, definitely a fire hazard so this is something you definitely want to do 
if you're running these small space heaters and we're getting to that time of the season when everybody's going to be using them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my my standard, let me get some of this out of the way here. I'm going to use my standard household vacuum here, which has a, an attachment. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to clean out a lot of that lint and dust using this brush. Now these brushes help pretty well because they attract the fuzz and the dirt and they stick in the bristles. So you can see this particular head right now is pretty dirty. Now all you need to do is pull it off of the vacuum hose itself and vacuum it and it'll be clean. So let me go ahead and get this thing cleaned up a little bit and we'll jump back on and we'll take another look at it. Um, you know, these Lasco heaters are not cheap. Uh, I think this one ran about $49. And uh, if you can clean it out and get it uh, back in good shape, no need to spend more money on a new one. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and fire up this vacuum. I'm going to put you guys on hold again for a minute while I do it. And uh, it's just too difficult to try to hold the camera. <laughs> And, uh, and work at the same time. So um, hang on tight and uh, we'll get back when this thing is cleaned up. All right, so now you can see um, we got this fan assembly here, um, this squirrel cage type fan, cleaned out pretty good. Um, as you look around, you can see a little bit of dust in here yet, but for the most part, she's pretty clean. Uh, what I ended up doing was I used an old paintbrush and I was able to get in inside these fins and scrub around and get most of that dirt out. Then what I couldn't get, yeah, here's a tip for those of you thinking about doing something like this. Keep your old toothbrushes. Don't throw them away. They come in handy for a lot of different things. And with this toothbrush, I was able to get right down inside of these and get these good and cleaned out. Uh, so <clears throat> now I went ahead and I revacuumed out any dust that I may have gotten inside here. And I see a little spot right here that I'm going to try to clean up a little bit better. It's got a little bit of a charred area here. So I'm going to take that same toothbrush. It fell on the floor on me, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and just lightly go over the top of it. You don't want to bend these fins because it's all about resistance with these heaters. And the resistance in between these layers is what causes the heat. Uh, basically, you've got power coming in down here. It uh, works its way up through here, and it causes a radiant heat effect. So you want to be careful with these fins. You don't want to bend them or get them, get them out of shape, but you do want them clean. So uh, now you can see just by using that toothbrush, uh, I was able to get down in here. And like I said, I'm just very gently going over this. And get down in here and get this cleaned out pretty good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum it too. Um, now you noticed in the beginning I had a, quite a bit of gunk and dirt and lint that was trapped up inside this heating element and this is really the main portion of this unit is uh, what generates the heat. Okay, so uh, in the meantime I also cleaned off the other side of the squirrel cage cover, the blower cover. And uh, I think now uh, I'm going to get one quick final back here and I'm gonna start uh, reassembling. So, um, give me a couple minutes here to get that together and uh, we'll take another look at it. All right, so I got the uh, squirrel cage two halves put back together. Um, it entail essentially four screws. You can see here, Oops, sorry about that and uh, down here, and basically one in each corner. Then there's four slightly larger Phillips heads that hold the actual squirrel cage and motor assembly 
into the frame of the heater. So I went ahead and put that head in right away too. But you can see now how clean it looks in here. Um, <clears throat> I don't have the uh, air compressor that I can drag into my house. It's, it's out in one of my sheds and, and it's running on uh, 220 out there. So uh, I do see a spot right here though that I'm going to come back in with, with a brush and might as well get it cleaned up right away. But let me take a look right in here. I got some dirt. So we might as well get that cleaned up. And then I think I'm gonna guts it and uh, I'm gonna try running this thing around the back on and see if that got rid of my problem of this thing rattling. I know it definitely got rid of uh, its efficiency, and you know, got up upped its efficiency by getting rid of all that grit and fuzz that was hanging out inside this blower and on the heating element. So there's the inside of that squirrel cage. A little spin here. Make sure it works nice and smooth so you're not hanging up anywhere. Because that's your primary source of uh, air when the thing is running. Alright, so I'm going to give it a shot. Let's see what we get. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, and probably one of the most important things, is before you take this thing apart, Please unplug it from the wall. <laughs> I don't want to see it lit up like a Christmas tree. So I'll unplug it first, then start taking it apart. All right, uh, one other thing. This happens to have, uh, now again, I mentioned this is a Alaska brand heater. Uh, I don't know the model number offhand. Um, it does have the oscillate button here. This is a push button in and out. And you've got a thermostat control and then your fan control. Uh, fan, heat one, heat two. Um, they're very nice units. I've had a number of these over the years and for one reason or another uh, they just got worn out or whatever. I'm not sure if they still produce this one but uh, I sure hope they do in case I ever need another one. Um, inside of this base, and I, I've done this already, I did this last week thinking it was the problem. Inside this base is another motor and that motor controls the oscillation. And if you take a look deep down inside here, this little pin, that needs to be greased well because that pin is part of the oscillation. The pin slide is on a cam that's attached to the motor that's underneath inside the base. And that cam moves this pin back and forth inside that slot. And that causes the upper portion here, the upper portion of the heater, to oscillate back and forth. <clears throat> the other thing you want to make sure you've got some white grease on is around this base. Right here, there's a, a surface. And this is a little pad right here that you can see is part of the oscillation system too. So you want to make sure that you got some good grease on there. I would say I'm going to go about down to here because that's about as far as it's going to oscillate on both sides here. So just uh, lightly put a little bit of white grease on there and that, that'll that help th smooth things out. Alright people, so I'm going to go ahead, now that everything's cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and plug this thing in with the back off. Now, if you're going to do something like this, don't have your kids around or your pets around because you know they're going to try and stick their hands in there or your dog is going to come over and sniff or whatever the case may be. So be very careful doing this with the back open. But I just want to make sure everything is working correctly before I go ahead and reassemble this thing complete. Alright, so... Let's get that part done and then I'll check back with you in a second here. Let me get it plugged in and we'll get back on. Alright, so I got it plugged in here with the bag off. And I got it up against the wall here. Just to keep my my critters from trying to get behind it and see what I'm doing here. Um, one thing you want to do is you want to turn up this thermostat a little bit so it doesn't act like it's not working. And uh, let's go ahead and give it a shot and see what we get. Uh, I got a red wire sticking out here a little bit. I want to tuck him in. 
And of course, when you're in here, you don't want to mess with any of these connections. Now, I, I'm not going to get too close because I do have it plugged into the wall. Uh, but make sure you're not messing up any of these and, and you know, get them loose or, or you, know, you don't want anything short now. Uh, they tell you, you know, you're not supposed to open these things up and work on them, but I've been doing it for years and never had an issue. So let's go ahead and turn on the fan part first. Oh boy, does she sound quiet? Listen to that. You can barely hear it running. And uh, let me let me very carefully, without touching anything, turn this thing around and we'll try and take a look down inside that squirrel cage there. And you can see that squirrel cage is spinning nice, nice and smooth. I'm gonna, I turned it off here for a second, and there you go. There's the squirrel cage blower. So let's go back on again and I'll let you hear. Now I got a lot of air. Now again, I'm going to be very careful moving this thing and that's one of the reasons I put it down on this piece of wood so I could move it around without touching it and of course it grounds it out too. Um, but I got a lot of air movement coming out of the front. Now one of the things I thought about doing while I had this thing apart was taking out this front screen because over the years, um, it's gotten a little discolored from the heat. But I don't have any um, heat paint at the house. Um, I, I would suggest using like an automotive engine spray paint you can pick up uh, pretty much anywhere. Probably even Walmart. Uh, if not, try one of your local auto parts centers. And you could uh, conceivably take this screen out. It's just basically held in with a couple of tabs from the other side. And you can respray paint that thing and make this thing look like brand new. Uh, just make sure you don't do it while it's on the unit. Because what's going to happen is your paint is going to go inside here. And it's going to clog up that uh, heating element that we were looking at before from the back. And probably start on fire. So um, I decided to skip that this time around because I'm not too concerned about how it looks. I just want it to function. All right, so we're on fan right now. Let's go over to heat and let's see what we get. So now we're on heat. And within a few seconds here, yeah, she's warming up already. So we get some good heat going and uh, we got really good airflow. Boy, this thing is really putting out the air now. And uh, you guys saw how clogged up it was to begin with. All right, so now let's try the oscillation. I hit the button up on top here. And let's watch this thing oscillate back and forth. And we'll see how quiet she is. Now it takes a couple minutes to make its way around, and that's how these are. There's nothing unusual about that. And boy, she is running nice and smooth, nice and quiet. I can hear a little bit of noise coming from that lower motor that I mentioned that's down inside this base that's, that actually does the oscillation uh, with that white pin. Now, maybe I can get a shot of that. Might be a little difficult, but you can see how that white pin moves up and down, and, or I should say forward and backward in that slot. And that's part of that cam assembly that um, operates the, the oscillation feature. So, there we go. She's all clean, ready to go, and my cat's coming over. <laughs> like I said, they got to get in on it. So, I'm going to shut this thing down and go ahead and clean out the, the back case of this thing. Let's shut her down. Let's unplug her. All right, now, no worries with my cat getting into it. Okay, so... What I still need to do over here is get this back housing off the floor. And I'm going to go inside here and clean out all this garbage. I'm going to just take it outside and I'm going to use that paintbrush I had. Here you go. I'm going to use that paintbrush and I'm just going to brush this whole thing out. As you can see, one of my dogs tried using it for a chew toy at one period in time. Don't ask me why or how. But uh, I can see little puppy teeth marks, so probably when one of my dogs was, was small. Alright, so let's get that cleaned up. And then uh, I'll get into the next step. 
which is going to be how do we replace these odd screws that held this thing together. Um, so give me a minute or two, I'll get that cleaned up and then uh, we'll look at, the, at these screws. Alright, so as I mentioned before, we had this kind of goofy screw. It's almost like a Torex with a with a center in it, center hole in it. And uh, my my camera here is not real good at getting the close up, but uh, you can see that it has a little pin in the center of the hole, and that requires some special kind of screwdriver, probably to keep you from getting into the back of this thing. Uh, so. I went out in my shed and uh, I got a little hard literal hardware store out there and I was able to find some screws that were relatively close to the same thing which is the standard Phillips. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in and we'll get that thing all buttoned up, get that back on and then we'll jump back on here and uh, we'll, we'll give it the ultimate test. So hang tight for a minute here and uh, I'll be right back on with the put this back on the heater all right so <clears throat> I got the back on I used those uh, screws I pulled out of my shed and I replaced those uh, goofy headed screws uh, I got it plugged in now this particular unit when you plug it in you get a power light on the front uh, once again here we want to make sure that our thermostat is up so it does actually turn on and I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. Alright, so we got it on fan. And we got fan. And we've got oscillation going. And once again, I got it on this, uh, this hunk of wood here. Just to prevent any shorting out problems or that. I don't want to burn my flooring. It's pretty nice flooring. I don't want to burn it. So anyway, uh, we got it on fan. Now let's switch it up to heat. Let's see if we got the heat coming. And there we go, I can feel it heating up already. So it's pretty much instant. It, it takes maybe uh, 30 seconds or, or less to get this thing to heat up. Now we put it up on number two. We got two heat settings, one and two. I'm up on number two now. Kicks out about twice as much heat. And it's working. Now, when you do something like this, anything electrical, I guess, one of your best tools is your nose. So if you smell anything funky or burning or wires burning or something, well, unplug that thing right away. Now, I'm getting a, a real little faint smell, but I recognize it as heat, heat smell from that, um, that core inside there, that heating core. So that eventually will... Uh, dissipate. It's from the cleaning process, forcing all that dirt in and out of there. So uh, I think we have success. So once again, uh, I'm going to put this down a low because it's pretty warm. It's, we're 75 today and it's pretty warm out here. So I'm going to kick this thing down and let it run on fan for a while. Let it sit and oscillate. Keep an eye on it. Uh, I wanted to thank you all for checking in. Uh, please uh, hit that subscribe button. And if you uh, want to get the uh, updated, latest, greatest videos coming off of our channel, hit that notification bell. And you'll get a notification every time we post something new. Uh, also down in the description, we've got some information for some shirts uh, related to our channel the uh, Teespring and we also have a Patreon donation account down there for those of you that are getting something out of this. Um, we would hope that we would reciprocate with a small donation or possibly buy a t-shirt and you get something for your money and uh, we get something out of it too. So thanks again for checking in. Uh, once again please subscribe uh, to Country Life in Lockhart, Texas and we'll catch you guys on the next time around.